Hi, I'm Dan with Six Monkeys. We're gonna go through a, a quick install video of our Six Monkeys tire swing, our tire carrier. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about it and we're gonna show you how the whole thing's kind of assembled. For the most part, these are a very universal product. We base it on the Jeep Grand Cherokee, but they fit a lot of vehicles. So we'll get started on this and uh, we can have a really good understanding on how everything's put together and why we chose to build it the way we did. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our our lower section. Um, obviously this one's raw, we built it today. It will be coated you know, when you receive it. First thing you wanna do is grab this piece and you're gonna slide it into your receiver. I've kind of mocked this up on my table here. Slide it into your receiver. And you'll notice that it kind of hangs at a little bit of a you know, sloppy wonkiness. The first thing we wanna do is get rid of that play. Uh, you're gonna take your uh, 5 8 hitch pin. I really recommend a locking one so nobody steals your carrier. I do not supply them, it's a whole safety thing. You need to buy your own. I always go to the furthest hole in, you'll notice that there are three holes in this, so there's some adjustment to which hole you can use. Uh, typically with the Grand Cherokees, you just go to the furthest one in, and that pushes everything really tight close in. If you need to adjust it later, you'll just undo this portion, slide it out to where it, it fits the way you like it. Um, so let's get started here. We're gonna slide this in all the way. Put your hitch, pitch, your hitch pin in. And you'll notice that that already took some play out of it. The next thing you need to do is find your play remover kit. It's a U-bolt, a plate, a couple of flat washers, a couple of lock washers, and a couple of nuts. You're gonna take this and it's gonna drop down over the top and the back. The next thing you're gonna do is put your plate underneath. The part that's arched up is gonna to go towards the front of the vehicle and face upward. You put that on, get your washer, your lock nuts, your lock washers and your nuts on. And I'm actually gonna go through this entire install and tighten this up so you can see exactly how it, how it tightens everything. The size of this play remover sometimes varies with us. It all depends on, on who we can supply this little, or who we can get this little kit from. For some reason, things are just not consistent lately in the market, so it's not easy for us just to, you know, find the same kit everywhere. Uh, this one happens to be a 5 8 wrench. You're gonna get under here, get a couple turns on one side, a couple turns on the other side, Kind of just work back and forth a little bit. We get this very tight, really tight. And once you get that tight, you'll notice there's no more play in this. And this is actually rocking my clamp around. Tighten that up so you can see that there's no play. So now we have no more play in this lower section. So now we're gonna start working on the upper. This is the upper section. When you receive it, there will be a seal already pressed into this bottom side so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you're gonna be really careful when you set this down on top of the spindle because you do not wanna damage that seal. You're gonna take this upper section there will already be a seal and a bearing on the other end. Put your bearing on this side, drop it in there, make sure it's flat. When you go to set this on here, be careful not to damage your seal. Set it down on. You'll find a really big one inch washer. Just set that on next. This is your castle nut. It goes on. You can use a, a pipe wrench or a crescent wrench, whatever you have. I just happen to have my giant socket that's made for hubs and stuff like this. You're gonna wanna tighten that down. Get it as tight as you can get it. Getting it really tight, 
make sure everything seats in good. And then you're gonna loosen it. You're gonna wanna get it kind of, you'll, you'll kind of get a feel for how tight it should be. There should be a little gap here. It should kind of swing free, but not too free. That actually feels pretty good. So now you're gonna take a look at your castle and you'll notice there's a hole in the spindle. Just find that hole. If you can't see it, you might need to tighten this nut up a little more or loosen it up, whichever way you need to go. Once you line that hole up in one of the notches, you're able to put your cotter pin in. You're gonna push that all the way through. And for this, I'm not gonna bend this over because I don't wanna destroy this thing, but you will then bend this cotter pin all the way back over. Uh, be careful not to hit your, your grease fitting. If you ding that thing, you won't be able to get grease in there. You'll also wanna put grease in there at this point. So the way that this grease fitting works, it pumps grease through the top of the spindle. It goes through the spindle all the way to the bottom, to the other side of the bearing. And the grease actually comes out between the lower bearing and the seal. So as you're pumping grease, it's gonna fill from the bottom to the top. When you start seeing grease come out of the top, you know it's completely full and it just purged the entire area. Uh, you'll probably grease this thing once for its entire lifetime. This thing is never gonna rotate a complete 180 degrees or 360 degrees. Um, it might catch a quarter mile worth of work in its entire life, you'll never have to grease it again. So once you have this thing all greased up, you're gonna get your cap, your rubber seal, put your, you know, your rubber seal plug in there, put your cap on, put it in with a rubber mallet. Put it in with a rubber mallet, you won't dent it, and just work your way around it, tap it in. Um, pretty easy, and at this point, the entire thing is now one piece. Now we just have the little stuff to work out. So now we're just uh, finishing up these little details. Uh, you're gonna next put in your, your pull pin, spring-loaded. Uh, this way it never comes off once you install it. You can't lose it like a regular pull pin that has a cable and all, we're not doing all that. Spring-loaded pull pin. Put it in there, thread it in. Should go in very easy. Little pair of channel locks, just snug it up a little bit. Make sure you get a good grip on it. If you get a good grip on it, you won't scar it. Snug it up, good to go. Um, now we're gonna work on the other half. Here's an example of our uh, tag light and it's not wired up. We solder these together before we ship them. Uh, you're gonna remove the nut off the back side of the tag light. You'll notice down here in the corner, this is a tag light bracket. We've notched this out to make uh, assembly really easy and also replacing them really easy. Just gonna leave your nut hanging out, slide that in, put the nut back on the back. A little tricky. And you're just gonna tighten that nut down and that's gonna shine over your tag. This is your tag bracket. Self-explanatory, uh, we supply quarter inch bolts. Just bolts in here. It's easiest to put your tag on with the upper portion swung open. That way you can access the back a little easier. And then uh, this is our two prong plug. This is gonna plug directly into your four prong harness for your trailer. Um, we used to use a four prong. We decided to get rid of that. We don't need a four prong, we only need two. Uh, positive, negative, it just plugs into the back of your vehicle, easy. If you ever need to remove your tire carrier, it's not hard work. You can just unplug this and, and pull your entire carrier. The next step is gonna be on the other side. Uh, now we're going to adjust our over center latch. Uh, this is a very important component. You'll notice that there's a little bit of play in here. When you put your spare tire on, there may not be as much play there just because of the weight of everything. And these are meant to make contact. I call these striker plates. 
When this swings, you'll notice that this piece is tapered. So if it does make contact, it will move up and rest on the top side. To get rid of all of the play, this needs to have some contact. This ensures that there is no play. Obviously, we're not gonna swing open with our pin, but this isn't cool when we're going down the road and we got a bunch of weight on the back of there. So the first thing you wanna do is latch this thing. And you'll notice on the bottom, there's a safety latch. Push it till it clicks. These two nuts on the top, we're gonna run those all the way, almost down, all, almost all the way down. Leave it a little bit loose. Now we're gonna tighten up the bottoms. This is all 10 millimeter stuff. It's a lot easier if you have a, a socket to run the bottoms, a wrench to do the tops. I know this is really boring watching me just move these, but I think this is a very important step. Getting this adjusted perfectly is definitely a, a finicky thing. It can be a little tedious, but if you do it right, you'll never have to adjust it again. Always hand tighten these, never use a power tool on them. Uh, you really need to feel the tightness of this stuff. So right now, we're gonna watch this gap. That's in between the upper and the lower. We're gonna tighten this down and we're gonna watch it until that gap is no longer visible. You're gonna need to work both sides. You're just gonna get a feel for it. You'll notice now when you let loose, everything opens up, moves up. When you push down, should be pretty tight to push it down. But now we have no more play in this top section. Everything is tight. Uh, once you've achieved that, and it feels good to latch and overlatch, it shouldn't be super hard to push in, but it should, it should feel tight. Uh, once you get that, you can then tighten up the top nuts, which are just like retaining nuts. It's gonna lock everything in place. Once you have those tight, uh, you can move on to putting your spare tire on top. To mount your, uh, your spare tire, we supply these grade eight half inch bolts. Uh, we coat the backside so they don't rust. You're just gonna slip these in here. They fit in the slots. Uh, using this pattern in these slots with the carriage bolts allows us to fit pretty much any, any lug pattern on any vehicle. Um, the cool part about this is you can select with your, your lug pattern, you can select how high you want your tire, how low you want it, just by you know moving the tire up and down in the pattern. Obviously these carriers were built around the, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, I personally run a 20 by 10 wheel with a negative 12 offset and it fits on here perfect. Um, a lot of the guys that run these have different offsets so fitment always varies depending on the size of the wheel and the offset. I know with the factory, if you're running a factory offset, uh, you might have a little bit of collision right here and you may require one of our spacer plates, uh, which is really simple. It's basically just two of these plates with a spacer in between. You bolt it on and it, and it just pushes everything out so you can fit your wheel. Once you get these bolts in place, we have these crush washers I usually put them on so that the lip faces out. Put them on both sides and just spin them all the way down. They'll help hold your nut, your, your bolt in place so it's not moving around too much on you. And then from there, you can set your wheel on, little half inch washers that go on, and then a grade eight poly lock nut. So I get asked all the time, uh, how can we lock the wheel to the carrier and seems to be the go-to thing is for customers to be able to swap out this bolt with a different bolt and put a locking lug nut on it that's a very difficult thing to do these are half 13 carriage bolts they don't make half 20 carriage bolts which is what a lug nut is a half 20. and again they don't make a locking one for the half 13. 
my suggestion would be to run a cable through this gusset and just run it around your wheel. It's the easiest, simplest way to do it. You don't have to worry about losing a, a, a walk. It just, it just makes the most sense. So as far as towing with this, uh, this is a two inch receiver, just like the one on your vehicle. Um, I tow eight to 10,000 pounds with my Grand Cherokee with our carrier on there. Uh, this bottom tube is a quarter inch wall tube. Uh, this thing is stronger than your receiver. Uh, you will have no issues whatsoever. Obviously you have to take the, the total weight of this off of your, your tongue weight of your trailer, which is the, the carrier is approximately 50 pounds and then add your wheel to it. We do make a few accessories for these. We make a rotor packs and table mount. We do not supply the rotor packs, we do not supply the table, but we make the mount for it. Um, it's really, really simple to install. It fits on all of our existing carriers. Um, it's simply a plate that just bolts on underneath here, a couple bolts here, a couple up here. It's a big flat plate. It has a bit of a jog over, put your rotor packs on. Um, another accessory make is a high lift jack mount which bolts onto this face. It has a couple tubes that come out and kick over where you can, you can put your high lift jack. Both of them are really cool products. They definitely free up some other space in, on the vehicle. As far as uh, needing a custom size one, so on our website, www.sixmonkeys.net, if you go to this listing, you'll, you'll notice there's a custom option. Um, there's also measurements there for you to verify fitment. Uh, we always, tell customers to measure from the center of their receiver tube to the outside of their door. Uh, whether it be a lift gate or a swing, measure to the outside of the door. Um, we can then take your measurement and cross-reference it with the ones that are listed on the website from where our center is to our pivot point. Now when you swing this open, you'll notice that there are a few more inches here beyond the pivot point, a good six or eight inches. Uh, we just need to make sure that your tailgate is going to clear. Typically, they always clear. Everything kind of sits down lower than the lift gate and the swing gate. But it's always good to double check, especially something like this. This is not a cheap product. Definitely not cheap to ship. Um, there's also measurements on there for the height, which is uh, the center of your receiver to the top center of the plate and that'll give you an idea of where your tire is going to sit. Um, if for some reason you need custom measurements, select the custom option. It's $50 more. It basically just accommodates the time that it takes to build this outside of a jig as well as the additional material and the additional shipping that it takes to build a bigger one. This is our current model. Uh, we're going to switch a few things up in the near future. It's gonna make, uh, make it a little more versatile. It's also gonna make it a lot easier for us to ship it and making things easier, we just pass that on to you. You're gonna get a better product. It's gonna be more versatile for you. And it's, uh, it's all around gonna be a good thing for us as well as consumers. We have verified fitments on the Forerunners, F-150s, the Compass, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, we're going to verify fitment on the Lexus GX460 this evening in a couple Tacomas. So uh, if you purchase one of these and you don't have one of these vehicles that I just mentioned, please contact us. Let us know how it fits so we can add that to the list. We're uh, constantly growing and expanding and we want to make these available to everybody. You can find the Six Monkeys Tire Swing at www.sixmonkeys.net. Our extension on the front is a separate listing. Uh, I recommend to not buy it until you know how everything fits up. If you, your wheel doesn't have clearance, buy the spacer, easily add it on later. You can also find the roto packs and table mount on the website, it's a separate listing. And the jack mount, you can find it as well. Shipping time is typically two weeks or 10 business days. Um, it can vary up and down very fast. 
Um, I think we've gotten it down to four or five days, which is just the minimum. We can't build anything quicker than that. It takes time to build, code everything and ship everything. Um, we've also had it go up to a month. Typically we like to knock stuff out quick and have happy customers, but there's just uh, some things that aren't out of our control and it seems like everyone wants to order everything all at once. So we keep up the best we can. Uh, we are also now shipping internationally. Obviously prices are not cheap right now due to the economy, but we are supplying these all over the world now. Um, if you do want to place an international order, simply select the international option. It will deduct our free shipping costs that we include in our product. And then once you put your information in, it will give you your shipping cost. Um, this keeps it absolutely fair and we look forward to having these all over the world.